Welcome. All right, guys. So today I want to go ahead and, and just talk about the importance of a follow-up sequence and actually building a follow-up campaign. Because the truth is this, is nobody buys the first time. Okay. No one's going to opt into your funnel and just after opting into your funnel, they're going to go automatically and go purchase your product, right? It's very important that you have a follow-up sequence. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how I build my follow-up sequence. And most of you who have opted in have come into my funnel um, to show you the sequences that I go. And I'm also um, going to be also giving you access to the spreadsheet that I'm using at the end of this video. Now, I just want to give you a heads up. The spreadsheet uh, that I'm using is a duplicate of the main copy that we're using. So uh, some of the information in there, you're going to have to edit it. But obviously, I'm going to go ahead and leave you where uh, pretty much every information that you have on here so you can go ahead and duplicate and use that for your own campaigns. Uh, feel free to um, edit it. It's just I'm going to go ahead and explain to you step by step as far as the guides and what you need to do. And um, I pretty much you'll be able to access the spreadsheet automatically for the most part. Okay, so the most important thing here that I want to go ahead and cover is um, the sequences, okay? So I, I typically like to go on a seventh follow-up sequence. Now, it's not seven steps instantaneously, but I like to do a seven follow-up sequence, right? So let's say, like, for instance, I'll give you this. The first sequence I do, this doesn't count. This is just an integration. So uh, instead of Ryzen, you can link your account with um, either Integromat or you can link your account with Zapier. What they allow you to do is they allow you to communicate, you know, have one application here, communicate with another application. Let's say this is Google Sheets, right? And I want Google Sheets to communicate with Gmail. I can use Zapier to link that. And then I can put my Ryzen CRM as the middleman. So what that means is the information will come from Ryzen. As it comes from Ryzen, it will automatically, Zapier will capture it. And once Zapier captures it, it goes ahead and sends information to the next application and an application can feed that back to wherever I want to go. Um, so that's basically a workflow in there. I'll cover that in a future purpose. If you guys want me to cover that sooner, right, to get that on the top of my priority list, if I see on the comments that people are like, hey, um, I want to know more about Zapier. I want to know about how to sync Ryzen with Zapier. I want to know how to use Zapier in general. If you actually leave that in a comment, I will go ahead and make a video on it. But because that would basically let me know that you guys actually want that information. But for now, what we do is we have a TCPA workflow with Zapier because um, if you've watched my videos in the past, we filter our database through the TCPA list. Um, so that is a third party application that we uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of. So I'm able to basically send every time somebody opts in, I get that data and I forward it to the database. The database cleans it up. Once it cleans it up and says this person is good, it sends that information back to my staff. OK, that's it. So the first sequence as far as sending emails is. Um, Obviously, this is just this is not the internal notification. This is just a follow up sequence. So there's no notification. There's nothing. This is just a sequence to the t to the um, customer. As far as notification goes, there's a different sequence that I use. That's just anytime any form is submitted, it doesn't matter. It just gives me a notification on um, what it is, who submitted the form, and what it's all about. Right. Sequence one is just an email. Right. Um, I send out an email that says contact first name. It's Emmanuel. I see you requested more information on Rise and Results CRM. And then we have wait 15 minutes and then send uh, sequence number two, which is going to be a text message that says, hey, it's Emmanuel. You just requested more information on the Ryzen results for your RAM. I'd like to create a custom plan for you based on your goals, what specifically you're most interested in. And then obviously this is a sequence in which now Ryzen also communicates with Facebook. So we can basically, rather than you using a conversions API or using a pixel on your Facebook uh, website, you can go ahead and use Ryzen to basically send that data automatically to Facebook to mark that person as a lead. Just This is very easy for people who don't know how to set up a conversions API. You can just go ahead and have us send that data automatically to Facebook, right? Without having to use that uh, conversions API. Um, so this is not a sequence. This is just a automated workflow. And I'm going to show you where I actually list this out. Now. And then after my email has gone out, my SMS has gone out, then um, wait three days. And then after three days, there's a voicemail to go out. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but the voicemail is basically. Howdy, it's Emmanuel here. I've been trying to get a hold of you, but so far I haven't been able to. Okay. So I record a voicemail to kind of make it a little personal. So they've got an email from me. They got an SMS from me. Then they get a voicemail from me. And then after they get a voicemail, if they still haven't responded, then they get an SMS. So the SMS says, hey, it's Emmanuel. I called you yesterday. Did you get my voicemail? Right. 
And then after that, they get another email. And then the email says, uh, it's been a while since we introduced ourselves, yada, yada, yada. And then after they get an email from me, then they get another email, okay? Um, haven't heard from you in almost two weeks, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. After that, then they get the last sequence email. This is the last sequence, which is the last email I'm going to do on the follow-up. Um, we haven't heard from you in almost two weeks and you haven't. So this campaign is going on for two weeks, two weeks. Okay. It's going on for two weeks because inside of Ryzen, you can use smart, um, um, AI to basically, for instance, system logic. So right now, wait five days. I have a delay here to wait five days from when the last, um, sequence went out. It waits five days from there. It sends another email. And after it sends another email, it, um, here, this is a wait two days. I didn't you know, label that. Wait two days. And then after you wait two days, and the last sequence email is, the sequence here is, um, this is a wait one. Uh, this is also another wait two days. Okay. So when you add it up, the wait periods is typically takes about, all in all, broken out is about two weeks. So this is a two weeks follow-up campaign. And then after the two weeks follow-up campaign, I have another workflow as well. This is basically where I send out my promotion content to people who have opted in to either one of my funnels, to an email, whatever it is. And I go ahead every time there's a new YouTube video, a new blog post, a new promotional content, a new... This is basically my list, okay? This is content promotion to my list, okay? So basically, I just go ahead and add them to my list, and I just still go ahead and blast out to them um, because you opted into the email. So obviously, if you want to opt out, you can always opt out, but... I still make sure I maintain some element of communication with them because if they haven't booked for the past 14 days and let's, and I still email them for the rest of, as long as I have the email, at some point they're going to do business with me. So that's how I do the follow-up sequence. Now the spreadsheet I spoke about earlier, this is the spreadsheet here. And, uh, and the way the spreadsheet pretty much works for the most part is, uh, if you can see it over here, um, let me see if I can move myself, make it smaller. Okay, good. Okay. So this is how it is. This is, so it, it goes from left to right. Okay. Now, uh, am I really an Excel expert? Not really. I'm not, honestly. Um, I just pretty much like to, because the way the brain works is the brain works in a very sequential pattern in a very straight line. So when you have things in like a checklist, for instance, or you have a bunch of sequences that you can go ahead and streamline through, it's easier for your brain to actually provide you with more information when it knows that there's a the next step as opposed to you just freelancing and free floating stuff, right? So for instance, here it says trigger integration. So what is going to get this workflow to start? So somebody fills out a form in the in the landing page. Um, this is the campaign name. So the reason why I name this is so when I go search for the workflow or I create the workflow and I go search for it, I can always find it. So I always make sure I name it exactly on the spreadsheet as I'm going to name it in the, um, um, what do you call it, in the... Um, uh, in my Horizon uh, CRM, and that's the reason why I do that. So that's, what's the desired goal? What is the goal of the uh, sequences, right? Am I trying to sell a product? What is the desired goal, right? The desired goal is to get them to respond. That's it. That's just the desired goal is to get them to respond. Now, if you notice all the workflows, add to workflow is where I call webhook data transfer. Okay, I just call it the webhook data transfers. You, um, I don't want to call it something crazy. So if you notice, there was at first there was a TCPA verification. That was step one, okay, which was to verify the list. Step step two is to add them to the Facebook conversions API, right? Which was obviously I showed you guys um, 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 how I added that workflow. I'm I'm not I didn't go too detailed into it just due to the I wanted to keep this video short. But like I said, if you want me to cover something, if there's something you like on here and you really want me to cover it, just drop it in the comments. And honestly, I'll, I'll do a video on it. That's perfectly fine. But I need to make sure there's engagement um, on that specific topic. Number three is add to content, uh, content promotion workflow. This is the last sequence, right? I add them to my promotion workflow. So this way that they can always be marketed to, right? And then sequence one is email. See, it says, hey, uh, first name's Emmanuel. I see requested more information, blah, blah, blah. Number two, hey, first name, it's Emmanuel. I would like to know more about your goals and what specifically you're most interested in. And number three, howdy, Emmanuel. And you can see here, it labels it here, email, the text, and then also the script of what I actually said to them. If you actually go ahead and if you, if you once I send this, I'm going to send it exactly with the script. So you can have that voicemail and it says, howdy, Emmanuel here. 
I've been trying to get a hold of you exactly verbatim as far as what I'm going to say on that voicemail. I just write it out and then I record the voicemail and I upload it into my Ryzen CRM. And the next thing I do is a text that says, hey, just called and missed you. When's a good time to chat? Exactly in the same sequence. And I write it here. This is right away, right away, three days later. So this is three days from when they initially opted in. This is four days later, four days from when they initially opted in. Seven days, seven days from when they initially opted in. That's how uh, it's counting. And then here, seven days, seven days, and then uh, text, email, email, email. So as you notice, I only send out two text messages, uh, one voicemail, and majority of what I do is email. The reason why is just I don't want to – I the thing is, if I've texted you twice, I know you've seen it, right? I just don't want to be in that position where someone's like, hey, you, you know, you're blowing, you know, blowing on my phone, whatever it is. Because email, it's low pressure and they can always opt out. Okay. Because a lot of people really don't want to deal with pressure. So they can always opt out at any point in time. That's the reason why I prefer to do most of my outreach with email. Right. And then here, um, I didn't include that in here, but obviously you can have the form and survey name. And then once this campaign is published, there's going to be a, uh, uh, a sequence published. Once the sequence is published, I come up here with a checkbox and I go ahead and click the checkbox in there. And that's pretty much it. And as you can see right now, we have one for life insurance over here. I, this is, like I said, this is a copy. Um, um, this is a copy tip. Okay. Um, it's not really the main data source per se. Um, that I'm going to be sharing with you, but I do actually use this. I actually am using, this is not me making up false data. This is actually data that I actually use. Um, so yeah, just pretty much go ahead and use it. Once I'm going to upload it, it, it the link, the, the link to the, the spreadsheet is going to be in the description. Just go ahead and use it for your planning purposes as you're using the Ryzen database to go and say, Hey, okay, this is how I'm going to build my workflows for reaching out to people. Right. Is I'm going to send them an email. I'm going to send them a text. I'm going to send them a voicemail. I'm going to do this. And if you guys like it, and if you want to see more content like this, and you need more tips and spreadsheets for how to organize stuff, and I'm also going to be doing another one for how to build a Facebook campaign from scratch with your Google spreadsheets before you actually go ahead and upload it into your ads manager, or you go ahead and upload it into the uh, uh, the ads launcher. Okay, that's the Rising Ads Launcher. That's not the ads manager. It's our own tool for you to launch Facebook ads. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. If you like the video, click the uh, uh, like button, subscribe. And like I said, guys, whatever you want to see more as far as organization, data, and stuff, leave the just leave it in the comments. And, I, I, and trust me, I'll go ahead and make a video on that. And that's all I got for you guys today. And for that, I say enjoy.